Today, I'm gonna to show you the easiest ways to get started creating your own custom transitions in DaVinci Resolve. I just released a new pack of transitions, sort of a slot machine theme that lets you drop in media into uh, different segments of your video clip. So uh, transitions have been on the mind and I thought, hey, why not give all of you um, the tools you need to, you know, begin this journey of making your own transitions. Now this won't be a walkthrough of this pack. That gets complicated quick. I saved that for uh, website members over on my website, sterlingsupply.co, where you could purchase this transition pack, other premium products, or grab one of dozens free presets, templates, and plugins. But in this video, we're gonna keep things hopefully as approachable as possible. There are many different ways to start uh, building in Fusion what could be your custom transition, um, but I'm gonna go about um, what I think is the easiest way. We'll talk about some uh, other alternatives on the way, um, but hey, if you wanna get started making your own transition, that's what this video is for. Let's do it. I will go ahead and just use this layout. I have a video of me talking. I have a screen recording. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that transition I had there because what I'm going to do, I'm gonna scroll in on this edit point here, and I'm gonna right click and just select add 30 frame cross dissolve. This is a 30 frames per second timeline, so it'll just sort of fade between the two clips. Super standard transition, right? Yes, <laughs> but you can right click on this cross dissolve and you have an option to convert to fusion cross dissolve. I'm not gonna click that yet, but I'm just gonna show you. If I select this right now, we have controls over here in the transition sort of tab inside the inspector. Different ways to customize like the length or alignment, stuff like that for this transition. But if we right click and select that convert to fusion cross dissolve option, then in the inspector, um, those settings go away, but now we have this new entry. And super important is that on this entry, we have this little button here to open in the Fusion page. If we click that, it will load us into Fusion. And uh, if I scroll in, we will have two media in nodes going into this little cross dissolve box and going into a media out. Fusion Basics 101, uh, media in is a way to get, you know, different clips into your uh, Fusion composition. And then whatever you do with those or any other media you bring into your composition, you have to plug that back into a media out to send it back to the edit page. That can be a standalone Fusion generator. That can be an effect that you drop right on a clip that will have one open input and then you send it to a media out and it goes back to the edit page. Transitions, as you can see, typically require two open inputs, and then one output that goes to the media out back to the edit page. So I can select either of these media in nodes, and I can either drag them to these windows up here, so you see what we're working with, or I can press uh, one and two uh, on my uh, keyboard to send directly to those uh, two viewers we have here. So this media in one, which I've loaded here, is that first clip, and if I scrub through, you'll see the entire duration of that clip um, for the duration of uh, however we, long we stretch that transition to be on the edit page. And then same for media two, that entire duration. But once we look at the cross dissolve, we start to see what's actually happening. It starts just this first clip, it goes, fades to the second clip. And this structure is very important. Uh, this sort of group is where we can build our transition. And then this is what we will need to save out to our computer and, and drop in the right place to have access to it on the edit page. So we can see we're bringing those two in. They are entering this group separate. And then they're both going to this one dissolve node. This first clip goes into the background. The second clip goes in the foreground. And this little slider here, we can see is animated to go from one all the way to the other. Um, if you click this modifiers, you can see that this is built using an anim curves node. Um, we will probably, will we? Yes, we will build a super simple transition and we will come back and touch on this anim curves node because it's very cool. But um, I need to pause here a little bit to make another note about structure. This is a great way to jump into making a transition because it, it, you are starting with a transition, if that makes sense. You could drop a blank fusion composition uh, on your timeline and like make this structure and save it as a group with these two open inputs. As long as you build and save your node tree in the correct format, you could save out a transition from any fusion composition you're working in. But like I said, it helps to build a transition like in the final transition sort of 
landscape. So now we can see we have our Fusion workspace, but really this group here is what we're working with. We have two inputs, one output. Now, if you want to kind of start from scratch, if you select this dissolve node and delete it, oh no, it will get rid of the entire group because that's the only thing in the group. So we at least need something else in here before we get rid of that. And I'm just going to create a super standard merge node. I'll create this. Uh, by the way, I pulled up this search bar, the search select tool option by pressing shift space and typed in merge. And if I uh, have this tool selected, hold shift and drop it over any of these lines, it will drop it in there and connect automatically. And then what I can do is change this sort of foreground element, disconnect, and then it's not letting me grab sort of this end of this input. So if I create just a blank brightness and contrast node, then I should be able to grab that output, come to this merge node, um, and then let's see if this works. Yes, I, then I can delete that. And so we see now this background, this first image is coming into this merge as the background, and I can delete this now as well. And then the second media in, it's coming into the merge. So if we preview the merge, this is all we see. Okay, <laughs> more, more fundamentals. This merge node, all it does is take uh, the background image here, let me get rid of that, background image here, and depending on the controls you choose, it will keep that background kind of as is, but the controls let you tell it what to do with this foreground image. So right now we have the background and the apply mode is set to normal and the operator is set to over. So it is just sort of pasting that foreground image right on top of the background image. And because it is a full screen video clip, this is all we see. But if I come into these like transform controls like center, if I start sliding this, you'll see that underneath is that background image. But let's keep something super basic. Let me look at this size. I'm gonna right click on this size and modify with anim curves. That gets pretty crazy. We can click over to anim curves. And first thing I'm gonna do just because things are crazy is change the scale back to one. Now, anim curves is an engine for animation. You can set custom keyframes if you want to, but built in is this source option, which can be set to transition. So this is going to automatically look at the length of the transition on the edit page, which is super valuable because that is something that the end user can change at any time. So whatever we tell it to do here, um, it's going to be reactive to uh, the length of that transition on the edit page. So um, right now uh, we have an offset of zero and a scale of one. So that's saying we're starting at a value of zero and over the length of this transition, go up to a value of one. So if we go back, we'll see, oh, it's very small. So we have just sort of like a zoom in transition here. If we were to ch change this to a value of like 0.5 and a scale to 0.5, it would still end full screen, but it would start at a scale of 0.5, see? So uh, for this whole sort of zoom up option, a uh, offset of zero, scale of one, gets us what we want. So this now is over a length of one second, but this uh, is already sort of baked in. If we were to go back, change the length of this dissolve, or I guess just transition now, then it would still execute that move over the new duration of that, of that transition. Now this is probably as basic as this can go, but don't forget, you have access to the full sort of suite of Fusion tools. For instance, let me just uh, create a new text plus node. I'm gonna connect the output of that to the output of the merge to create another merge after the fact. And I will just type in, hello. So now that's just sort of pasted on top of the entire screen, but let's do something a little different here. Uh, I have this text, I have a merge. Now I'm gonna right click on the center parameter, modify with vector result. This gives us a cool modifier where you set an origin, you set a distance and an angle. So with an origin at 0.5.5 in the center, the angle is set to zero, which by default is, you know, right. If we pull up this distance, it will slide to the right. That seems fine, but whatever. But if I pull this origin, over all the way over here to the right, find out where it's off screen, and then I can right click on distance and modify with another anim curves that is set to duration. So now um, if we start previewing, it will push that duration bank based on the length of our clip. Um, we can see the scale is set to one, so it moves it from whatever that value was off screen up by one, but at that point, it's not quite off screen on the other side, so we can pull it up a little bit more. 
So now we can see, I don't know why you would want this, but we have this sort of scale up transition, but also we have this text sliding through. Cool. <laughs> That's just to demonstrate that when you are making a transition, you don't need to only work with the specific uh, full video files that you have access to. But don't forget that you can do a lot even with those files. You could add in a uh, color corrector node so you can affect the contrast or the gain or other things in the course of your transition. You can make your clip black and white and then go full color. You could do lots of stuff. You could mask these individual clips in different way to reveal them however you want. As wild as things can get in the Fusion page in general, you can have all of that wildness in a normal drag and drop transition. This truly is just a diving off point where you can get as crazy as you want. Um, but there's uh, some last few things we need to cover. Say this was your end goal. Just a little scroll up with a hello sliding across the screen. This is a functional transition. First things first, let's select this group. I'm gonna press F2 to rename and I'll just call this hello slide. Cool, that will just help us keep track of things. And now I can right click and go to settings, save as. This default location um, is for like sort of saving these macros or tools if you plan on using them in the Fusion page. But if you can see this file path up here, uh, it gives us some information of where we wanna go. Um, I used to recommend um, sort of like just saving this on your desktop so you have access to the file and then you can sort of drag it where you need to. Um, we might come back to that um, because there, there's something else I wanna talk about. But for now, if you click back one to Fusion, then you have templates and you should have this edit folder. Um, from templates, if you don't have this edit folder, I believe you can create it, just name it edit. And inside you have effects, generators, titles, and transitions. Those are the folders you see and have access to on the edit page. So if I open up transitions, you can create another folder if you want some organization, um, or you can just click save. And then let's see if this works. If I go back to the edit page, um, let me go ahead and I create a duplicate of this little scene. I will delete that transition completely. Let's see if it's here. We open up effects, uh, video transitions. If I scroll down to fusion transitions, we have new hello slide. And if I drop it on this little clip and play, zoop, it zooms up and we have our little hello slide. Very straightforward. I'm gonna talk about the other option, but I do wanna say one thing first. Um, stuff like uh, effects and generators, if I grab a generator, what do I wanna grab? Something like my little speed lines effect, right? Um, in this world of creating um, tools in Fusion to use on the edit page, you can uh, create these custom controls to like uh, modify these on the edit page. I find this to be much more essential for those generators or effects. Um, it's not often that I really wanna like fine tune a transition. Um, this might be a good example where you would want to, if like, if this is text, you would want to have uh, control over and uh, change at a later date, then you would need to go a level deeper. Um, but hey, this is an intro video, if you want, an in uh, a more in-depth video, uh, leave a comment, or maybe I'll just drop a link to a past video where I've talked about this in a little more detail. Um, but for transitions, a lot of times you just need to, you know, rig it up to work right and it will keep working right. Uh, you can see I can stretch this to be much longer and both the zoom and the text scale appropriately. It's super cool. So, hey, this works, but uh, I do want to go back and talk about um, a few things. Okay, let's go back to this first one. First of all, this settings save option, you could always access the one you saved afterwards by going to that same uh, sort of uh, directory. But if I just drop this on my desktop, hello slide and save, uh, I dropped it in another folder because my, my, my uh, desktop is messy. <laughs> now we just have this dot setting file and a few Things. Okay, this is just a text file. Um, if I just drag this into Fusion, it will bring the whole group in. Cool, and you can modify it if you need to, resave over it. This also makes it very easy to share. Um, you have the expanded option of creating a DR uh, FX uh, sort of holder or file. That's a super easy way to share and install these. It just lets you double click that and it sends it to the right directory. That's super cool. Uh, what I wanna talk about um, is just another option for installation. If I open up my effects library, then I can see templates, edit, uh, transition. At this point, I could select this transitions folder, or this layer, 
press these three dots and click show folder, um, which opened up that same location we navigated to in that saves menu. If you saved your uh, uh, transition out this way, at this point you could just like copy it over or drag it over. That's helpful. Uh, additionally, uh, Sometimes you can drag this right into this UI and drop it here in transitions and it will sort itself out. Um, this is a little uh, between uh, my desktop here is a PC, I have a Mac as well. Sometimes one works the better on one or the other. So whether you want to save it in the Fusion page or save out this dot setting file and email it to someone and tell them where to drop it, you have a few options. I might also link to my general video on DRFX in general. That is a whole world unto itself. We're trying to keep this video very bare bones but if you want to make your own transition with like a little something going on and save it on the edit page for quick access boom we've done that drops it right in where we put that video transition hello slide we've got it drag and drop whenever you want it, re-time, you're good to go. Hopefully this is really exciting for some of you that just wanna like dip your toe in this. Fusion can be wild in general, but I really think that users sort of like creating their own tools like this um, is a great way to like funnel, funnel people a little more into Fusion. It's super fun, it's been my life for a few years. I think it's cool, hopefully you do too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.